Well, folks, free agency is coming up in just a few days, which means that there's been a whole bunch of scuttlebutt over the past couple of days that I've been hearing around all these different teams. Uh, scuttlebutt, is that the I think I'm going to go with scuttlebutt. Obviously, uh, ESPN has reported some of the stuff, but I've got some other stuff uh, that I've been hearing that I will share in this video right now. Welcome back to another one of these videos. Uh, hopefully you subbed after the last one, because if you didn't, then you're probably missing this. You might have missed other things. If you're watching this, just sub is what I'm getting at, because uh, I've got so many videos hitting. Anyway, uh, same same thing goes, you know, nothing is for sure until something is signed on free agency day. Things can still change. Things can fall through. So just remember that, uh, because no matter what you're hearing, until there's ink on a piece of paper, which cannot occur in most cases until Monday, you should definitely understand that stuff can always change. Anyway, let's break it down. So first off, let's talk about CLG. You know, a lot of people were wondering what's going on with CLG. Uh, I can now say, I'm going to give a little bit of a an assurance on each of these. Roxa, Finn, and Deftly likely joining the CLG lineup. Uh, and I will describe that as fairly confident. Uh, you know, at least... At least I feel like two of the three of those are going to pan out, but I wouldn't be surprised if all three do. On to Hunter T. As I said in the last big video I did of one of these, they were really interested in FBI and they were in a bidding war with Johnson. Well, now I'm going to say with fair confidence, I think is what I ranked the last one, uh, that FBI and Closer are joining. I think there's a good chance that who he ends up on this team as well, but I'm not, I'm not as certain with that one. I would say that that one seems likely. But Closer and FBI, I'm fairly confident, are headed over to uh, 100T. I've heard that from multiple sources now. Which means, if they're not in the bidding war anymore for Johnson, I can say fairly confidently that Johnson is headed over to Evil Geniuses, uh, and that will be a acquisition that occurs from Dignitas. Now, on to Dignitas. This one is more of a seems likely than a fairly confident, but I think it's very likely that Del Monte ends up over there based off of some of the, the conversations I've been hearing. Um, so we'll have to see if that ends up being what it is. But it'll be kind of funny to see him return back to his old team. On the immortal side, uh, well, this is going to be a rookie roster. It's not the only one, uh, but it looks like they're going fairly budget. And we will see an OCE bot lane and Raisin and Isles. I think some of this has been reported by ESPN already. I'm not sure. But Raisin and Isles joining from OCE. Potluck likely to be in the jungle and Insanity mid. Those are the only four that I have right now. I would rate those as uh, seems likely. Um, if only because there's so f there's all four of those. And maybe one of them could change. But I, I actually think there's a very good chance that all four of those players will be who ends up starting and uh, who ends up being part of the Immortals roster. We'll see. So, obviously, there's a lot uh, here between CLG, 100T, EG, Dig, Golden Guardians, and Immortals, uh, but there are some that are still open. So, I would say this brings us into the open questions and speculation part of the video. Uh, so, one of them is, what the hell is FlyQuest going to do? So, it sounds like FlyQuest's roster has completely imploded. Uh, I don't know if they're going to end up, you know, maybe they have Solo and Ignar and Turtle, but... I just think it's unlikely that all three of those players uh, continue on with the org um, because, I don't know, like Ignar, from my understanding, really liked the idea of playing with PoE and Santorin, and so if those two players are going to different places, I don't know if he sticks around on the team, or maybe he does. I, he could he could go back home. Uh, who knows? Now, uh, we do, speaking of Santorin, we still don't know for sure. I have not heard anything that this is like locked in Santorin for sure with TL. Um, I actually am, a little, I have a little bit more skepticism or reservations than I did about it the last time I did this video and I was like fairly confident Santorin was going over there. I'd still say he's most likely uh, based off of what I've heard, but we'll see. Now, uh, as I talked about in the video, maybe you saw it. If not, you should go look at it, uh, talking about how NBA stuff could affect the LCS. The licorice situation is no longer near this like 1.75, 1.5 million buyout. Uh, in fact, I understand that it's gone way lower, uh, which means that he's now within TSM's purchase territory <laughs> because TSM is not willing to spend a lot of money. And I think we, at least historically, historically, I will say, compared to some of these other teams. And I think that's part of the reason why they are not 
seemingly in this perks bidding war. Um, and that's why ESPN's reporting they've locked in POE as their, their purchase, because I think he will come at a significantly lower price than, than perks. So I think that means that we're going to end up with licorice on TSM. That is my best guess. Now, I've not heard anything official, but ah, man, I'd be really surprised if he ends up someplace else. It seems very, very likely that he ends up over on TSM. Uh, and that raises a big question around who is going to be TSM support. I actually have no idea on that one. I've heard nothing. So I didn't mention this in the big roster roundup because uh, it's not NA news, but Niski, I've heard, is probably headed back to Europe. And I've heard the most likely candidate for him to compete for is Fnatic. I think I'm the first one saying this. I'm curious how Fnatic fans will receive this information, but uh, I have heard previously that Fnatic was having a hard time figuring out a mid laner, at least in Europe. And so it would make sense that if they're struggling and Niski doesn't necessarily have a spot in North America, that he end up he could end up over there. So I would project Niski is going to to Fnatic from C9. Um, and yeah, now I'm just very curious about what ends up with perks because if C if C9 if he ends up with C9, that could be very fascinating. But I also think there's a decent chance he ends up at 100T or EG, though C9 may be still my most likely candidate. Um, and then we need to figure out what's going on with CLG. Are they keeping Smoothie and Poe Belter if they are ending up getting Broxa, Finn, and Daphne? Uh, that seems pretty likely. I feel like most people would have said those were the two most likely players, especially Poe Belter, to stay there. But we will find out. So. Either way, uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this. What did you think of, of this video? If you liked it, please, please like. If you have some big opinion on all this, feel free to drop it into the YouTube comments or I guess and discuss it on the Reddit thread or whatever. But I'm, uh, I'm curious to see what everybody thinks of all this stuff. And uh, we're getting closer to free agency. So we'll see what ends up happening on Monday. Hopefully a lot of these answers start to come through. And we'll see if I'm right on some of this or if stuff changes in between. But this is all based off of, I think, uh, some pretty good information. So... Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe. Stick around for the outro. Bye. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching my off-season coverage. It's been quite fun sort of chasing all these different rumors, talking about what the league could look up, uh, look like, look up, look up to me. How the league could look up to me, which honestly they should. How, what the league could look like next year. Uh, and I wouldn't be able to do all this stuff if it wasn't for Alienware. Look at this beautiful lineup of Alienware stuff. Uh, you can check them out at alienware.com slash Travis. There's a link in the video description below. You can use Travis 10 off Q4 as your code to save 10%. And there's going to be some uh, awesome Cyber Monday, Black Friday stuff coming out from them soon, I hear. I can't give you the secret yet on what they are, but uh, you won't, you'll, it'll be a lot less expensive for you than spending on some of these EU imports. Let's put it that way.